Uh, thanks very much for your time, Dave and Terry. This is Mike Anthony, and we are looking over a comment that I placed for a change to the really the master elevator code in the uh, in 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 the uh, in the United States. This is the parent standard for many others, and um, what my particular comment I had only one for this revision cycle, and it had to do with risk assessments and what I wanted to do in this particular case was could we make sure that we have as much competition among the professional groups that prepare risk assessments and so at this point I'm obligated to, to respond to the committee and Dave is carrying that forward so that's the setup Dave could you add a little color to what I to what I said and tell us where we are. First of all, tell us where we are as far as the calendar goes, how much time we have, and if you could address uh, some of the technical specifics we've been talking about this morning. Go ahead, Dave. The uh, ASME A17-1 Elevator uh, Standards Committee uh, is asking uh, that in response to your inquiry, of hazard risk analysis and using the ISO that if there is another standard that of comparable uh, value that could be used, that was your question, uh, that is US based, that it be put in the terminology in the A17-1 standard so that uh, people that would have varied uh, methods of interpreting the hazard risk analysis for any piece of equipment or passenger safety. Currently the ISO is the standard that ASME is using because it is uh, uh, recognized internationally and ASME uh, codes are opted by their countries as well as the US and Canada which is a combined code and enforceable in North America. Mm -hmm. So the real issue is in order to address your question, they, what do you consider a comparable U.S. risk hazard analysis from a code body or organization that would be acceptable both in the U.S., Canada, and internationally? Mm -hmm. And we've done some very cursory research. We don't have you know, no ANSI standards developer that we know of, a domestic standards developer, is in that space. We uh, don't want to go through, I don't want to be picking through all of this stuff, but we've gone to ASTM International. Uh, we, we've gone to uh, ASME to see what they have there, and it doesn't appear as though they have anything that addresses elevators ex explicitly. There does, there's a kind of a generic type of a risk analysis here coming out of the, uh, the ASCE and the ASME. So, but nothing with the title uh, as explicit as, as this here. And all I want to do is make sure that, that the specialists, the professionals that are assigned uh, the job of uh, preparing risk analysis, and it, that, that we have a, at least competition among them. And, uh, you know, some of these for hospitals, for example, and stadiums, you know, I'm not sure how many elevators we have at the hospital, Dave. I'm going to guess the better part of 40. At, at, at U of M Hospital, we have 100 elevators? 125, yeah. Okay. That's a 800-bit of hospital has 125 elevators. Uh, that's almost like, what, five, six per bed in an elevator? <laughs> so it's non-trivial. And, uh, and and getting the risk analysis correct uh, is, is is important. We we did run into a lot of um, in our little light research here. There, there's a fair amount of academic research with very formal, very formal approaches to risk analysis, and a lot of this stuff originates in uh, the adaptation of the fault tree analysis that NASA used for uh, you know for the for the space program in the early 60s and 70s. So. Uh, the, the math is there for us, but the data, 
the data is, is, is difficult. And so that's why we went down and we, you know, we, we have this resource here, the Elevator U, and I felt that, uh, okay, so no, no matter what the math is, we're going to need some data uh, to at least uh, set a platform for the future. If there's going to be a risk analysis, that where, where would, um, where would a, uh, an organization, an owner, go, uh, an organization within our industry, where would they go for, for failure rate data? Data's, Dave has um, Dave has identified correctly that um, many organizations are fearful of, uh, of doing that. Uh, could you add a little color to that, Dave, with the particular catch-22 we run into? We need data to support our claims that we think we can optimize the way elevators are applied. But to do that, we need failure data, but nobody wants to give that to us. Do, do, do I, do I, is there a better way of saying that? Uh, no, you hit the nail on the head. It's more a point of uh, the fact that manufacturers are reluctant uh, to supply accident data because of the litigious uh, society that the U.S. is in that uh, uh, they are fearful that uh, any information that's given uh, will be used against them in a detrimental way to their corporation or manufacturing process. Mm -hmm. So it, uh, it really it bites you both ways. You need the data, yet uh, the data is not available because of the litigious society and uh, their fear of being sued over something that uh, uh, one company may do a different way in uh, such as door protection, uh, the door protection area, that uh, if a, a client is hit by a door and sues the uh, building owner, the manufacturer, because another company uses a different type of door protection, which one's better in uh, there's no standard there to say uh, that this one's better or this one's worse. It's a matter of it meets the minimum standard of the code. So uh, is it better or worse? Still out there for debate. There's no data there to collect mm -hmm. because the manufacturers don't want to give up that data because they're fear of being sued. But we know that the fire safety community is pretty good about keeping data. Um, that, that's probably a different discussion. I don't want to go too far, but the fire safety folks, you know, NFPA, for example, they, they keep track of data, but uh, of, of, of types of events. Uh, and then, of course, you can get really granular about uh, what's a fire and what isn't a fire. I never, I never thought I would hear that, but once you listen to people who are in the business, um, they'll say, well, we have a fire, but that's not the kind of fire you might be thinking of. So I imagine the same thing goes on with elevators. Let's get back to this and then close this out. So here we have um, here we have our proposal, and how long do I have to uh, to research this and to get uh, something to the committee so that it gets to the May meeting? Uh, is this something uh, is this something that I can do say within the next uh, thirty to sixty days? Is that is that uh, is, is that a reasonable sure. time frame? The shorter the time frame, the better, uh, because remember, there's uh, many members on the standards committee, uh, and this report goes to all of them. And uh, then each reviews the technical revision and or the technical document uh, is put out uh, not only for uh, the committee's review, but uh, those are the experts uh, in the industry. Uh, but for uh, any member attending the meetings or any non-member attending the meeting to come up with an answer. Uh, so if you, if you can have your answer uh, within 30 days, that would give the committee time to prepare it, respond uh, by the May meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I, in a certain sense, it makes sense that ISO would be in this space because of the way cities, international cities, I'm thinking Dubai, India, Asia, uh, this this is this is uh, uh, they're building elevators faster than we are. Let's put it that way. And so, to some extent, you could even. Got to correct you there because 
the manufacturers are many of the same, okay? Mm -hmm. And they're using one application for all the industry. They're not using, uh, this is good for the U.S., this is good for Saudi Arabia, this is good for uh, Germany. Uh, they use one uh, method of manufacturing, then the individual countries that subscribe to that code follow that. But countries that don't make changes in the manufacturer has to make changes to their equipment based on what they accept and what they don't accept. Mm -hmm. That's where he comes into play and uh, regulates the cost of safety. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you know, in, in a certain sense, this this supports the claim that I made in a blog post uh, very recently. I think I did it yesterday, where um, where the multinationals are. Uh, what do I say here? If you think that the smart campus is going to come up from the usual cast of characters, uh, you need to think again because. Uh, uh, very similar to the way we, we only see interest in elevator risk assessments coming internationally. Uh, we're, I, I'm, I'm telling the uh, leaders of our industry that uh, you, you may well be looking out uh, internationally for a standard of care uh, that's not here in the U.S. And it, it is, I believe it's completely possible for U.S. standards developer like ASME or uh, uh, even yeah, yeah, ASME could say, well, look, we're going to use this as our inspiration. Now, the degree to which it, what they would do here it would be different than what's going on uh, elsewhere in the world, I don't know. I don't probably not. But my intention for this was merely to make sure that we have um, uh, another risk assessment methodology uh, performed by an ANSI accredited conf conformity assessment organization. So all I'm asking for is keeping the competition open. But if it's not there, then we move on. You know that we have we have ideas that are running by us one every hour, and uh, we can't get too emotional about this one. So, Dave, we'll uh, then we meet in a couple weeks. I will um, I'll, I'll noodle around with this a little bit, and we'll get something to that committee. And I think you've done. This, but I'm grateful for your insight. Is there anything else that I should we should know about the meeting? You you were at the meeting, right? Uh, yeah, keep in mind that the next edition of ASME A17-1 uh, 2016 will be published this year. Already been through the public review draft, and that's what question pertained to. The next, the following edition will be 2019, uh, and uh, uh, they're working on uh, questions and revisions as we speak. Right. I, the best time, the best ideas for the next revision, I'm, I'm just showing our audience here uh, the strike and bold for this edition, for this public review draft. So this is what the 2016 uh, elevator standard will look like. It's non-trivial, uh, but in this case, ASME's process just, just installs the changes. They distill it. NFPA, you can see existing texts. They're all a little bit different. Um, they're, they're all a little bit different, and they do it according to their culture and their history. So it's as it's as good. It's pros and cons the way um, you know the way the standards are developed. I would tell Mr. Uh, gee, who's the run, guy who runs ASME? Um, God, who's the guy over there? Uh, you should do something about the C and that, the software here. I think somebody should spend some money. <laughs> it's a little. Sorry to say, guys, it's a little down market compared to what we're used to. But, and you know, we'd help you uh, if, if we with whatever time we have. But you know, we we, we slice through what a, a hundred standards developers a year, uh, so we, we know the good and bad. And uh, obviously, we're a supporter of the system. So, okay, that's kind of it then. Um, anything else, Terry? You've been on the line all along. Do you have anything to add or subtract? This is principally just about how we respond to. Uh, the committee uh, asking Dave to resolve this comment for us. Do you have anything, insight you want to add here? No, I, I don't attend the ASME committee meeting, so. Okay, all right. Yeah. The okay. committee is not asking me to resolve it. They're asking me to get you 
to respond to their question of what do you consider a like standard for hazard risk analysis? Yeah. That's U.S. based. And I'm telling you that we don't we don't have it. <laughs> it would come from some of the generic papers we have with fault tree analysis that we looked at. I don't want this. I don't want this recording to go on too long. But we don't have anything that explicitly deals with elevators, risk assessments for elevators. And in an industry with lots of healthcare facilities, as you said, that we've got, uh, uh, we've, got we've got an elevator for every eight beds at the University of Michigan. And um, you know, we've got about 20, uh, 19 elevators at Michigan Stadium. There's a lot of elevators in our industry. And yeah, keep in mind that the elevators at U of M Hospital uh, their their ancillary is where well as patient, okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, parking uh, uh, at the hospital is counted into that mix because mm -hmm. it serves them. Okay, that, that's so, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thanks very much, Dave. Terry.